day eight. Let's see if we can make this thing actually run programs. So last time I was complaining that the uh, CCP was currently being loaded at the bottom of memory. So if I fire this up and do free, we can see that our memory is extending from 2100 to 7000 on this unexpanded BBC Micro. We want to be able to load programs at the bottom of memory and as the CCP is going to be loading them, we need to put it somewhere else. So we want to put it right at the top. Uh, apart from anything else, this will make it easy for the program, if it doesn't actually need very much memory, to preserve the CCP at the top of memory so that it can just return to the CCP rather than having to warm start CPM and load it off disk again. Now, we can't just load it at the top of memory minus file size. Firstly, because we don't know how to fetch the file size yet, but mostly because uh, the pro all programs will use more memory than their file size because of the BSS. Uh, if I find our linker script, so uh, the program is made up of uh, five segments. We've got zero page, which is not stored in the file, that just defines what zero page values we're using. Code, RO data, and data, which are defined in the file, which are the things that get loaded off disk and initialized, and then BSS, which is uh, uninitialized memory. And our CCP is using BSS for, you know, buffers and so on, you know, variables, working storage. So what I have done is I've changed the binary format. Uh, let me load that up in a hex editor. CCP.sys. So at the at the top of here we go. Here's the definition. Uh, at the at the beginning of the file, we have two bytes and a word. The first byte, 07 is the number of zero page memory locations that this program is using. The second one is the amount of actual memory it's using. And the word is the offset in the file to the relocation table, which is 04B4 for the CCP, 04B4. What I've done is I've changed the definition of this, the second byte, to be the number of pages of memory required to load the program, which includes relocation. The relocation tables, of course, get discarded after loading, so these will overlap with the BSS. So we compute the maximum of the amount of BSS and the size of the re relocation table and set this accordingly. That means that if we have six pages of memory free, we know that we have enough memory to both load and relocate the binary and also to run the binary, which is a different thing. And to help this, I've also changed the format of the relocation tables. So rather than being a sequence of bytes, it's now a sequence of nibbles as most of the bytes were below 16, this is way more compact by about you know 50 percent. Uh, and so this makes sure that the relocation table is likely to be smaller than the BSS. As the only program we're going to be loading high is the CCP, and the CCP is quite small, then this was probably overkill, but uh, it's done, so it should all now work safely. So in order to actually make this work, we are going to have to look at the header of the CCP to figure out TPA usage, uh, allocate that many pages from the top of memory to get the base address, and load it there. So let's have a look. This is what happens in the BDOS. So warm start code. This is the stuff that's actually like loading everything. 
previously we were opening it, loading it at the base of memory in a simple loop, patching and relocating it and running it. So we need to read the first sector. We need somewhere to put it. We could put it at the top of memory, but the maths would be work, so let's just put it in the directory buffer, which is currently not being used. So that would be, we have to set user DMA uh, to directory buffer user DMA plus zero directory buffer user DMA plus one uh, load one record uh, computes the load address the load address is going to be we need to get the top of TPA page number in X we then want to subtract the number of pages needed. This will then give us the base address which we are going to store and the the low byte is of course going to be zero because everything is page aligned. We now want to copy the first record out of the directory buffer and into our into RAM. So that will be uh, Okay, we want to do this, but user DMA is not in zero page, therefore it is not a uh, pointer, so we can't. DY until negative. So, could we... I mean, is it worth putting user DMA into zero page? That adds 128 to it. Set the DMA address. So here's another place where we're using it as a pointer. Putting it into zero page would mean we could just use it directly here um, actually you know what this code is doing this is copying 128 bytes out of the directory buffer into user DMA we can reuse that Okay, so if we go back to our entry code, which 
which is here, we are actually just going to call copy directory buffer to DMA. We then want to advance the DMA pointer to the next record. As we know, we started at, uh, that should be a one and that should be a zero because this is the high byte we've calculated and then the low byte is zero. We know that the low byte started at zero, therefore it must be eight zero now. Okay, we now get rid of this code. So, we read the rest of the binary. Uh, copy directory buffer to DMA has used temp zero. Let's actually, because you want to keep, actually, I don't think we can use temp because I bet this is going to use it. Okay, so instead we're just going to push this. And apparently I thought of that idea because this is pulling it back off again. Okay, so this will get the base address of the program. So we then poke the entry vector. Then we want to relocate it. Our relocation code is going to need to be changed. Currently what it does is uh, actually I think this will work like once. Uh, the way it currently works is you give it a pointer. Well, uh, uh, the way the co code currently works is you give it a pointer and it fetches some numbers out of nowhere and uses those to do the relocation. And we're going to have to be a little bit more focused. Uh, so, we are going to BIOS set DMA So what we're going to do is change it so that it starts relocating at the DMA address, which is why we've just called set DMA, and it then takes as parameters the uh, the reloc um, thinking, thinking. No, we don't need to do that. We do need to give it some parameters. So uh, A is going, instead of passing the address in in XA, A is going to be the page number of the start address. And X is going to be the zero page start because we're also going to want to put those high. We haven't done anything about that yet. So compute the load address. Uh, so files get zp top of zero page is in x sbc directory buffer plus 
com header zp usage. And we don't need that yet at all. So we just push it. In fact, we're going to want to put that here so that we consume the load address before the zero page address. And why am I pushing the low byte of the start address? Because we know it's zero. So temp01 contains the start address. Uh, we want to So that's the top of zero. No, that is the start address of zero page that we computed. So just stick that in X. Then we call relocate. Then we calculate the entry point. And of course, this code here is uh, this is all a waste because we know it's. We know the start address is 256 byte aligned, therefore the low byte is going to be zero, so we don't need to do any of this addition. We just need to do store temp plus zero and go. Okay. It does not assemble. BIOS get ZP I haven't put in. Get TPA get ZP. Okay, that won't run because we haven't done the BIOS side of things. Relocate, or rather, entry relocate. Relocate an image. High byte of memory address is in A. Zero page address is in X. So this is setting up the load pointer. So high byte goes into pointer plus one. Low byte becomes zero. So then we compute the start of the relocation table, and that doesn't change. Here we need to set x to the, that goes away, uh, to the, the value we want to add on. Currently it's doing zp base, i.e. the base of zero page. 
So we're actually going to just change that to P-A-L-A-T-A-X. But as this code does not use X, it's preserved in next chunk. Okay. So then we go to the second pass where we relocate the the RAM addresses. So we want to pop the memory start uh, reset the start reset the pointer which is going to work through the code relocating things we also want that to go in X so we are going to do this one first so that we can just do this so that should actually be smaller code So, is it going to work? I'm going to guess no. I was right. And that will be because I forgot to update this stuff. This is where we load the BDOS, which happens from the BIOS. So we're actually going to Uh, load the BDOS here. And it still doesn't work. So this should have done the right thing. Okay. Let's just step through it. Uh, break 400, go, boot. So we print the banner, figure out mem start and end, these two calls to Osword, load the image. Do the relocation for two A. So A becomes one nine. That's the address where one nine zero is where we loaded the BDOS. Uh, X becomes two. Okay, those are both correct. That is the start of where the BDOS zero page is going. We then go to the relocation code. We store A, the memory start, and update the pointer in 01. So 0019, that is the address, 1900. We add the relocation offset. Okay, so yes, that's actually been stored at Rello pointer, which is self modifying code because that makes always makes things better. So 2055, that I believe is the right address. We now start relocating. I think this, this looks fine. Okay, well, anyway, let's just skip over that. So, this is now partially relocated. These addresses look wrong. That looks like it has... That looks like he's got zero page and 
No, it doesn't. O six. Oh, I haven't done the rest of the relocation. That's why those are wrong. Let's just break at 1904. Have we reached the BDOS? We have reached the BDOS, and now these addresses look plausible. So this is going to load the CCP. So this is the bit that's clearly going wrong. Okay, let's skip through. Store BIOS pointer. Clear some variables. Update the memory regions so that we don't overwrite the BDOS stuff. Call get TPA. I call now we call get TPA yeah, 197C. We know this stuff works. We're now here. Reset the stack. New line. Reset. Open the CCP file. Yes. We clear the C we clear the the FCB here. We now open it. It's open. Read the first sector into user DMA. Directory buffer is a pointer, isn't it? Yes, it is. So this actually wants to become this. Good. And I will just add one thing to the CCP in here. Just print the CCP address because this is a useful thing to want to know because this tells you how big programs can be without uh, wiping the CCP. And we know our start address, uh, which is at entry, so we are just going to. High byte of entry, print hex number, print zero, new line and exit. CCP has loaded at 7600. Excellent. And everything still seems to work, which is nice. Um, I also fixed a few things with user so that now it understands decimal numbers and prints them correctly. And if you try to pick an invalid number, it doesn't work. Previously, it would just start printing gibberish due to bad code. OK.
So we can start loading transient programs. So we want entry transient. Now Oh, uh, pars command we're looking for. Oh. Uh, no, I'm not. Sorry, that bit's already done. Okay. We have successfully... Yeah, inside transient, we already have the command fcb parsed and ready to go. So let's just try opening the file. We've got code to do that somewhere. So we've parsed it, we want to open it. And we're not using command fcb, we're using, so I'm not using user fcb, we're using command fcb. So, cannot open is going to be a slightly different um, message. Traditionally in CPM, if you try to run a program that doesn't work, you just get the file name and a question mark. So, that's actually going to be branch if carry set to cannot open, because we're using our local one rather than the global one. Uh, so we are going to... command fcb plus x fcb file name 1 by y compare it with is it a space Say yes otherwise increment y Compare y with 8, which means that we have run out of uh, characters. Keep going until y is 8, or we're looking at a space. So replace that byte with... zero load XA with the string pointer Print it. Print a question mark, new line, and exit. Okay, let's see what this does. So if we type a command that doesn't exist, good, that has worked. If we type a command that does exist, that still doesn't work because we need to put the extension on.
So if the first extension character is a space, then there is no extension. So we want to write uh, com to those three bytes. So it's going to be dy2 LDA com comma y store that at command fcb plus xfcb t1 like this until negative so knob no output that means it is correctly opened ccp there is no such file ccp.com ccp.sys no output it has successfully opened the file so if you type the if you supply an extension then you can run any binary is that a good idea i can't actually remember what the original ccp did let's have a look I can find the command table. The directory arrays, type, save, rename, user, here we go, user func. So this is something that we have to be aware of. Um, if the, the user can just type something like a colon to change disk, and that will actually show up here. So we have to test for that too. So this will happen if the first file name byte is a space and the drive byte is not zero. If it is if this is the case, then we want to save it. I didn't specify whether this is zero based or one spaced. Get drive returns zero based number. So this is actually going to Save the drive. Um, save the zero base drive. We now want to select that drive. So it's still in A. So that would be BDOS select disk. And then we're done. And we should never get here. The only time when we should see a space in the file name is if the file name is empty. This means no command line, so we shouldn't get here at all. Or there is just a extension at which case we want to fall through into the normal code.
Okay, so we've opened the file. We now want to go through the load process. So this is the same code as in the BDOS. But different. So re uh mute the start address. This is going to be loaded low, so this is actually fairly straightforward to do. So all we're going to do is call get TPA. Uh, therefore, x, uh, put that in x, which is the high byte, load 0 into the low byte, set the DMA address. We now want to read everything, not just the first sector, because we don't need to look at the header for loading low. So our load loop is here. So one, actually there is one thing we should be doing, which is making sure that we have enough space to load the program, but I'm not going to at this point. Uh, we also want to advance the DMA pointer each time. Do we have a pointer? We've got a pointer. Temp, that will do fine. So that needs to be a BDOS. Here we want to actually we want to load LDA 10 plus 0, LDX 10 plus 1. Here we want to advance the pointer. So that's the same code. Okay, we should have read the file. So we haven't done BDOS read sequential. And we haven't done BDOS get TPA because it's actually BIOS get TPA. Okay. Well, that was wrong. Hmm. You see, we're loading the CCP just below video memory. So if we end up loading too much data, it will overwrite the video memory. Yes, it is. This is a bitmap font, so you can see data there. Um, so this is telling us that we need seven pages of RAM. which would seem to be correct. So 
So why? Well, most of that stuff we saw was empty zeros. Why? That would be our BSS, and we are using uh, two lots of 37 for the XFCBs, plus 128. 33. Yes, yeah, 37. So that has actually this is more than a page of, no it's not, no it's, it's under a page of data. So this is loading the CCP at 7600. We want seven pages. So yes, that is using one extra page more than we expected. It should be loading at 7500. Are we doing our maths? incorrectly. So 7C Minus seven is seven five. So that should have done the calculation here. Get TPA is exclusive. Uh, the the top the top values here are exclusive. They are I think it's technically a closed comma open interval. So the bottom bound is inclusive. The top is exclusive. So seven C is actually the start address of the video memory. Okay. So break at one nine seven F reset. Right. Get TPA has given us two one seven C. Our directory buffer TPA usage byte is That's a pointer. Ugh. I'm actually amazed it did anything useful. Right. That's better.
that's not right because I forgot to load this there we go 7500 that's much more sensible all right so oops. if we run not it loads it and it will have loaded it to 100 so we break we dump to 100 I haven't figured out a, sh a keyboard shortcut for bring to front yet there we go this is however garbage that does not look like a program. This looks like relocation data. A program should have a jump instruction here. This is a pointer, that's correct. <laughs> Ah, in fact, is it safe to use directory buffer here? Yes. Uh, we can't write to directory buffer from directory buffer because it may be that we need to advance to the next extent, which will mean loading a new directory entry, which will, of course, write it into the directory buffer. But we can read into it, because it may read a directory buffer. It'll then update the user FCB. You haven't done this bit yet. Uh, and then we read the sector from the user FCB and overwrite what was in the directory buffer because it's no longer in use at that point. Now I say that this looks like relocation data but it doesn't end in an F so that's weird. So this is what we expect to see. This is our NOP program. So has that loaded at the wrong place? Let's try this again. Ah. The, what we're looking at is the uh, the remainder of the BDOS's own relocation data. The BDOS extends for, uh, from one, from 1900 up to here. That's the last byte, I believe. So we get relocation data from then on. Uh, but the BDOS isn't using anything from then on. Well, is it? The BDOS's own BSS starts here. And the BDOS has a reasonable chunk of BSS. Actually, that's not a great deal. It doesn't have any buffers. The buffers are held elsewhere. So if the buffers all fit here, then yes, the, it, they won't extend above 2100. So this suggests that we have in fact failed to read anything into 2100.
So we should be storing the actual address in the temp pointer. We call set DMA, we call read sequential. I think this is failing immediately for some reason. It's not reading a sector. Okay. Seven seven C D. Load our address two one zero zero. That's what we expect. Call set DMA. Here we are in set DMA, just stores the value and returns. Okay, read sequential. Here's the stuff before read. Carry is not set. but it has not actually done anything. Yes, yeah, so then we go around again, go around several times, I have not set the, the FCB address. So uh, that's probably left uh, temp zero and one in the FCB. Yeah, that was just reading garbage from wherever on the disk. That was never going to work. If you pass in an invalid FCB, all kinds of weird things can happen. Okay, so let's just continue. Read one sector. Let's read the second sector. End of file. So we break. Look at 2100. Hey, that looks like a program. So here we've got our header. No zero page. One page of TPA. Relocation data at, at uh, 000C, which is here. Here is our jump instruction, which needs to be patched. And then here is our program. Good. Okay. We now want to relocate the file. So this will be straightforward. So, um, we want to put that in the high byte, set the low byte to zero, and call EDOS set DMA. And then we can call BIOS relocate. So, the this is setting the point into the loaded image and at the same time saving the page number so you can put it into the address there. We are going to need a BIOS function. So not we uh, drop back to the prompt. We dump at 2100 and we see uh, 
LDA zero jump to two one oh four two one oh four is our BDOS instruction. This it's now been fixed up. Good. Uh, We now want to patch the jump instruction for which we again need the address, but this time in a pointer. So And we can get rid of this because we actually have this in our temp pointer. Patch the BDOS instruction, uh, GPDOS jump instruction. So this is. Uh, com header we're going to copy it out of our own header <coughs> so that's bdos plus zero uh, and then execute. Now, this is pointing at the last byte of the BDOS. So in fact, what we want to do is com header to entry, that's the entry point, store it in temp plus zero and go. Okay, so not brilliant. That should have just restarted the CCP. Uh, Nop will have um, jumped to the warm start routine in the BDOS, which will have reloaded the CCP. So I think that might be working. Can we do anything more interesting? Well, just trying to remember where I put, okay, it's under apps, where I put knob. these in a library to be honest okay excellent it works so we can read files we can run programs 
that basically everything apart from all the you know writing to disk stuff so let's let's write a small program no we can't write a small program yet because we haven't actually done any of the stuff to do with parameter passing so there's no way to get a parameter from the command line into the program so let's do that bit now I thought of various ways to do this I was originally wanting to put all this stuff in the bottom of the stack page but uh, we need 37 bytes for an FCB plus 128 bytes maximum for uh, a, com a command line and that uses up more of the stack page than I'm really comfortable with so we're not going to do that instead I am going to uh, allocate a chunk of memory in the application workspace this is going to come just before the BSS which uh, is going to be used for parameter passing I'm going to call that P block and this is going to contain a pre-parsed FCB Uh, well an XFCB really uh, which will contain the first parameter and possibly the second parameter plus a 128 byte buffer which is uh, into which we are going to write the command line tail We have not defined uh, okay missing memory error assignment for segment P block this means it's not in our uh, linker script so we're gonna have to put that in so that's going to go just before the BSS P block And due to the unique way in which we are doing our linking, where we assemble each program three times at slightly different addresses and then compare the results, why well, I have to repeat that three times. Uh, not sure that worked. Okay. Oh, segment P block does not exist. Okay, the BDOS won't have one, the CCP won't have one, but NOP will have one. And we're seeing this message twice, but not three times. So these warnings are coming from the BDOS and the CCP. Um, I think I can work around this by simply making sure the segment's there but empty in the bare header. Okay. So this should have made no difference to our NOP program, which as you can see it is now way bigger than it was at 30, about 45-ish bytes.
So here we actually want to uh, copy the command line into the user buffer, uh, into the program's pblock. So the, com the, the reason why I put it above the BSS is that it's going to be the first thing in memory after the program. It's going to overlap the beginning of the relocation data. So we, in fact, it is at the same address as the relocation data. So, calculate address of the program's p block. So we know that temp contains well, the entry point of the program. So uh, and we're actually going to do this up here. we're going to want to modify temp. So we can either do it above this, at which point we have to reconstruct it further down, or we can do it further down, at which point we have to put it back the way it was after modifying it here. And honestly, it's going to be easier to put it back the way it was. So now we are going to want to add on rel offset here. So <laughs> but of course we're trying to add it to the pointer we're reading from, so uh, so XA is now the offset to P block we want to add this to temp, so uh, the reason why we did this going with a decrement and starting with the high byte is so that we end up with things in XA in the right order because the low byte is now in A. So this is just going to be add temp plus zero, store temp plus zero, transfer uh, X to A add temp plus one, store temp plus one. Okay. Uh, and to copy the command line, and that's going to start at Um, the size of one XFCB. And we don't have access to XFCB in this uh, include file. Okay, we're just going to have to fake it. Uh, so This is going to be so 
going to work. I'll have to look up how to get the size of the structure. Give me a sec. Size of, obviously. And we want to skip the size byte. Okay, so uh, x is going to want to be the command offset. But first, we are going to skip any white space. So we now we want to copy bytes. So that's going to be Z repeat uh, LDA command line by X. Store it in temp by Y. So this will iterate copying bytes from the command line buffer into the P block until we reach a zero. So now we want to set the size byte. Um, so the number of Calculate the number of bytes that we have copied. We are just going to basically just calculate the number of bytes we've copied. And store it. program is getting too big. Well, our not our program, our loader. Wait a minute, we don't need to do that. We can put the whole block of code here in an if statement. If carry set, then go do the cannot open stuff. This is why I wrote these macros. Okay. And uh, now let's go over here to NOP. Uh, in fact, first, let's go back to the CCP because we are going to steal this. And this also wants con out, so we're going to steal that too. And what we're going to do is Uh, 
is we're going to write a little loop that's just going to dump the command line in hex. So load a byte from the command line. Command line plus one because there's the size byte. Actually, yes, just dump the whole thing for now. Uh, and then we print this as a hex number. And then we print a space. Then we are going to increment index, load it, compare it with 128 until equal. And then we just stop. We haven't done space. Okay, so now if I type NOP, then it hangs naturally. Has it actually hung here or in the CCP? Well, I would like to trace, trace through the CCP code, so um, Let's put, okay, so seven, eight, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we are uh, store temp to beginning of program. HC. Oh yeah, uh, this is now because the CCP is loaded high. We've also loaded all the zero page high, so yeah, HC. So that means that our address yeah, our address is at two one zero zero. So we are. Uh, calculating the p-block address so xa is the offset to the p-block which is 0101 I don't think that's right. It's not right. But that is what is in the header. thing is the relocation data looks like as if it's there which is not 0101 was it 0101 in the file if it was okay and yeah Clearly, the file is not 256 bytes long. So that means my program is doing the wrong thing. So this is the tool I made to produce my binaries. 
and all it does is it, it it links the program three times using the different link scripts and then by comparing the binaries with each other it can tell where all the relocation bytes are so link z links it with zero page one higher link m links it with the memory address uh, one page higher this is a very old trick that dates back to CPM itself. So uh, wait a minute, I know what's wrong nothing to do with that it's because this piece of code this piece of code sorry is trying to get the offset to the relocation block but I've just bumped it up by a5 bytes so in fact this wants to be FCB because the BSS comes after the P block. What do you mean it's undefined? It's right over here, of course, and we don't get a P block if uh, unless it's a COM file. Okay, that's better. Oops, I didn't actually want to do that. I wanted to do I didn't want to do that either. I wanted to do that. Okay, so 005C 5C here is the relocation data. Excellent. Now I wanted to do that. So we run not and it hangs because we still have our infinite loop. Three, four, five, six, seven. We're there. So load the start address of the P block into XA which is 215C which is the location of the relocation stuff uh, we now add it on to temp we copy the command line into the program's p block so the command line buffer in the ccp is at 7 aaf and consists of just a knob now uh, command offset which is in x is 3 so 0 1 2 3 that wants to be command line plus one because it doesn't include the size byte. Uh, so this with this this is going to copy one stray byte that shouldn't. So we store it, increment, increment, compare with zero to reset the flags, go around again, get a byte which is a zero store increment increment compare with zero branch we're here didn't I write some code here to set the length I thought I did I must have accidentally removed it okay so that wants to 
B DXA SEC SPC command offset LDY size of XFCB SDA temp comma Y. Let's just try running NOP and see what happens. Of course it hangs. I did take that thing out, didn't I? I did. Okay, well our program loads at 2100, therefore the entry point should be at 2104. So let's just see if NOP actually runs. It Okay, this jump here is going haywire for some reason. So if I uh, where here we go seven seven eight three four we want to break at that would be here skip white space copy the command line yep that was nothing so compute the length of the of how many bytes we've copied. That should be zero. One. Well, we did copy a zero. So, yeah, that actually wants to be one less than it was. this that is one byte cheaper we lose three bytes because the end loop is now a jump this is two a two byte thing uh, however previously we were spending two bytes for the compare, two bytes for the branch, and one byte for the dex. In fact, it all comes out the same. So I'm going to go back with the old code because it's clearer. No, it's not the new code, it's clearer. Yep. Okay, but anyway, we are storing the wrong value into the the buffer which is at that doesn't look like a pointer have we overwritten the pointer somehow did this do garbage Okay, so HC, our pointer is at HC 2100. Add on the, well, calculate the offset into XA. XA is garb. Uh, XA has been fixed up, that's why. Right, we don't need this. So the the offset field has been fixed up by the code above uh, the relocation procedure, so that it's now a absolute uh, address. Yep, 
good. That actually simplifies things. So run knob. <laughs> still garbage, still garbage, but we're getting there. 7834, we want to break at. Okay, we are here. Yeah, we never actually wrote it into the um, into the pointer. That's why that didn't work. Ooh, we have two hundred and fifty, uh, hundred and twenty-eight bytes. Uh, from the command line buffer. So we s it starts with a zero because we didn't supply any command line tail. So if we now do not hello world, world then it hasn't worked because we never actually did the offset properly. We should just be able to do... Oh no, we have to. Okay, so size byte zero, terminator byte zero, and leftover garbage. Ooh, H-E-L-L-O space W O R L D zero. Looking good to me. All right. And there is one other thing we want to do. So we are going to parse the command line uh, and uh, stash the FCB in the p-block so that the program doesn't have to parse it itself. In traditional CPM, the FCB parsing code only exists in the CCP which makes no real sense because there's lots of other things that are going to want to parse FCBs. And as you can see from all that code that we wrote further down the other day, it's pretty nasty. So our parse FCB stuff, that actually parses an X FCB. We pass in the address at XA. So Uh, temp is pointing at the p-block, so we just want to do temp plus zero, temp plus one, pars fcb. Now, it's not actually that as easy as that, because we parse two command line, uh, two fcbs. And these go into the first 16 and the second 16 bytes of the FCB. Uh, if you, if the program wants to use both, it then needs to copy the second one somewhere else because as soon as you open the first one, it'll overwrite the stuff. So uh, we want to load. Temp plus zero, so you'll see ADC sixteen LDX temp plus one 
if carry set increment JSR parse FCB. And we're going to change not so that instead of starting at new line, it's going to start at FCB. So not. So here is our FCB. It's empty. No drive, no file name. Here's the second one, also empty. No drive, no file name. Not. Nord parsed, not parsed, and the command line tail should be down here somewhere. So foo bar nothing. Okay, what has gone wrong here? We've done this carefully in this order so that we are copying the command line without advancing command offset so that we can then parse the FCBs here. But why has that not shown up at all? Something is there is an actual regression, so uh, so let's just put a breakpoint in and debug through it. It's the quickest way to figure out what's going on. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I can't imagine doing this stuff on a real computer with no debugger. So break PC seven eight four five six seven Wait here. Just happened. Anyway, we've got the address now, so let's do that again. Okay, we're here at skip white space next. Right. We got A, which is a 46. Okay, we're writing it to the command line. 8C is 215E, which is what we expect. Okay, relocation data. Wait a minute, 215E? That's not right. No, that's correct. We're writing it here. There's the F that we just put in. So this is going to iterate round until we reach 7857. Okay, 215E. Right, so our XFCB goes here. 
uh, here rather and then we have the command line parameter there okay that's fine so we calculate the length of the command line which is five bytes and we store it there we go there's the five we then parse the command line I think parse fcb is overwriting the command line I think this is wrong somehow anyway two yeah there's our FCB at 215e command line still there set the user number field which is user number zero, so that will have put it there. The only difference between an XFCB and an FCB is the user number field on the end. So we wipe it. Okay, we now wipe four bytes of metadata. In fact, we're, ripe, we're wiping everything. Oh, oh. It's the second FCB. So this is wiping all the allocation data. That's the, so we've got the file name in the first 16 bytes and then the allocation data in the second 16 bytes and then the current record, the random access number, and the user field in the third 16 bytes. And this is wiping it all. That's why it's behaving the way it is. So actually, we are going to have to parse things in the other order. That's annoying. So okay, so parse the command line into an FCB. So we want to say command line position, so skip white space, load, command offset, push. Pass the command line into an FCB. Okay. Copy the command line into the program's P block. PLA. Get saved command line position. TAX. Uh, we need it again here. Let's just put it back into command offset. Okay, let's try that. That's better. Right. Foo parsed into an FCB. Bar parsed into an FCB. And then seven bytes F O O space B A R. Okay. Command line parsing works. So let's go over here to NOP. We are going to try and write a dump command because I want one. So
This one, we want to include this. So what we're going to do is, if the uh, the file name parameter starts with a space, then we got no uh, no file was supplied. So that's. So this is just going to and terminate. So that's just going to be BEQ syntax error. And because this is returning with RTS, it's important we don't push anything on the stack. Which is, this is probably going to come back to bite me later, but... So try and open the file. We've done this already. This is the same stuff we did in the CCP. Uh, here we go. And carry set to cannot open. Oops, this also wants to do a here we're going to do cannot open, which is the same code cannot open file. So we are going to have, we've got uh, our we're going to have a word there, so So we're going to reset the address loop read a line stop if carry is set We need somewhere to put it. Well, we could define our own 128 byte buffer, but it would actually be easier. We already have the command line buffer that we don't need. And in fact, in CPM 80, uh, both of these things, the stuff that we've called the P block, exist in the 8080 page. Uh, and on entry to a program, the DMA address is automatically set up to point at the command line buffer. Uh, DDoS set DMA. Okay, so this will read one sector, one record from the file. We now want to dump it, so for every uh, one, each 128 byte record is going to turn into, uh, we're going to use eight characters per line, so that'll be 16 lines uh, 
uh, and once we've done 16 lines we have to go around again to fetch the next sector. So that's going to be dump one line and advance address. If it's zero, then this means that we have reached the end of a sector and we need to do it again. And then we're done. And notice the fact that we don't even have to close the file because there is no state other than in the FCB structure, so we just discard it when the program exits which is nice. So dump line. First thing we want to do is to print the address. Now I actually got this wrong. Our address is going to be three bytes long. Yeah. Uh, That'll allow us files up to 16 megabytes. So yeah. So Spacer is going to be a a thing to space separate the three fields of our dump. Um, So we want to figure out the address into the record, which is simple, because we just take the low byte of the address, mask it, and we're done. So we're going to uh, we need to want to put that somewhere. We don't need to put it somewhere. So we are going to load the byte, print it, print a space, and I got that wrong, then there needs to be no leading space there. Instead, we're going to put a space there. There's reasons for this that will become apparent in a moment. We are then are going to increase the address. Have we reached the end of a line? If so, stop. Then we print another spacer. Then we're going to do this again, but instead of printing hex, we're going to print sanitized ASCII in the traditional format. OK, so we actually want to do lots of 602 comparisons. Be right back once I've looked up my favorite table. I couldn't find it, but here's a different one. 
Okay, we want to be check for less than 32. So compare with 32 branch if carry clear to uh, uh, actually we can if carry is clear then it's not printable therefore replace it with a dot compare with we've got greater than or equals to one two seven if carry set then likewise replace it with a dot and of course it's safe to fall through from here to here because dot is printable so here we just do bdos con out no space but everything else proceeds as normal uh, In fact, we do wish to rewind a little. So that here we rewind back to the beginning of the eight character string. So we have incremented address by hmm, hmm. The thing is this may have um, this may have at the end of a line this will have wrapped round and incremented the next bit along so I think actually we want to decrement it. Is there a better way to do this? Yes, there is. Just put another. We're just going to use a a counter we know that address is aligned so we can just or in the index so this will then allow us to just increment index uh, load it, compare it with 8, and then stop. So then we can get rid of this stuff. 0 sta index, array index. So now you see we haven't changed index at all. We're going to do that now. So. Add eight. If it is zero, then it's wrapped round, therefore we want to increment address plus one. If that sets the zero flag, then we want to increment address plus two. And we're done, so just print a new line. That's a end proc. XFCB read sequential is undefined. Really? Did I remember to link these things with the... I did link it with the XFCB library. Uh, 
Is there a... There is a read sequential. XFCB reads... Oh! I have to imp import it, of course. I would like to put all these imports in the include, but um, that then causes problems because the imports conflict with actual definitions further down. So BDOS set to DMA, we can steal that from the CCP. this doing we want to move our two error routines up to here okay so if we run it if we then try to dump readme.txt what happens of course it hangs. What were you expecting? And we're somewhere in the OS. Breaker 2104. Okay. That wasn't where I was expecting to go. Is this because the program is now bigger? So if I look at it in this hex editor, it's now just under 256, uh, just under, just over three records long. Well, here's the transient loader. So debug. Eight seven four five six seven. We're here. So we're setting the length of the command line. So eight C is two two five three. This is where uh, where not P block is, and you can see that it's got two FCBs in it. I didn't give it a command line. And the command line has got is empty. Ah, uh, I I was too clever here. I forgot that uh, the p block is not in the root page, so we're actually going to have to call iOS get tpa. Put that into temp plus one. Okay, that should work. And I need to take out that jump. That's good. That's good. Uh, it doesn't fit. 
we are three byte the three characters short and I'm going to have to make these spaces smaller uh, and we're still going to be oh no we can make it work we can make it work so in fact the spacer just goes away completely and is replaced with a simple space and we also I want to uh, set the top byte of the address so not readme.txt why are we getting two new lines and this is garbage uh, So after dump line, yeah, yeah. I think this is now. Oh yeah, there's an extra space here. This is now exactly 40 characters across, so uh, it's wrapping round to the next line. So we want to get rid of that space. Yes, it's already added one here. Right, and the other issue. is that, yeah, I've done this in the wrong order. We ord in the index, but after we put the value into x. That's better. So I can also nop, nop.com, and there is the program and uh, control C should work. Yep, control C works. And I didn't actually check to see whether the, yep, this counter is working. The biggest thing we've got is ccp.sys. Good, good, good. So there's only one more thing to do, which is to rename it to dump.s so that goes away need to edit the make file to change this to dump okay uh, and I actually set this up uh, so this is creating a disk image with our files on it then I can load it up in mess which emulates a proper disk and I don't know if the sound effects are showing up in the recording but they are well but there are sound effects but this gives you the timing of the real thing so now if I do shift F12 to boot it okay All right, we do that again. That's interesting. That looks like it's restarted the CCP after doing the DIR. It's not supposed to do that. So you may be able to hear the disk moving. So dump. Syntax error dump dump.com and you can see the pause as it reads another sector let's try the CCP it's taking just enough time to print each uh, pair of sectors 
that the motor is stopping spinning so it has to spin it up again next time uh, but this gives you an idea of the general performance of the real thing which honestly is completely acceptable compared to 8080 CPM but let's try putting this into three it's, uh, oh yeah uh, mode 131 that will set the uh, that will put the video in this is a BBC master being emulated uh, the video memory is now in a uh, external memory bank so I do free you see that we now have quite a lot more space available so let's try dumping ccp.sys again. Uh, yes, the pauses are now more pronounced. Um, in the, the BBC Micro's uh, bitmap screen modes are a masterpiece of fast programming. It uses hardware scrolling which is why it can shuffle the 16k of memory that quickly. Uh, internally it's the BBC Micro uses 256 byte sectors and it, there's a disk buffer. So you can see a brief hesitation halfway through each page uh, as it fetches the other half of the buffer from the operating system and then a much longer delay at the end of each page as it fetches the new uh, the new sector from the actual disk. If I put it in mode 0 which is 80 by 32 that should be more obvious So we're not quite getting a page on the screen at once. I thought I calculated 16 lines. Uh, uh, this isn't right. No, no, that is right. Never mind. My terrible mental arithmetic skills are acting up again. It'd be nice to be able to do a 16 column dump but as all the systems I'm targeting are primarily 40 columns apart from you know the BBC micro running in 80 column mode I think I'll leave it as is for the time being but that's some nice progress uh, that's basically the user land done there's not we're not going to change anything else I mean we've done nearly everything there's a few tweaks we should probably do do like after running a program we should probably check to see whether the program try to change the current user and disk but that's trivial we need to do bios get drive sda drive uh, that's it actually. That that will allow Hmm. Do we have a call temp? I don't not sure we do. We do not. Okay, let's put one in. Uh, the user is not stored 
locally it's just the drive that's stored locally so that we can fiddle with the drive without a f we can fiddle with the BDOS's idea of the drive you know we are going to have to do that for the user as well but later so yeah okay that's great uh, added a dump.com user land is done so next time we'll actually start uh, writing files which is going to be terribly exciting okay until then <laughs>